Hey, master. Master. Master over here. Hey, hey, Pawn. I've been meaning to talk to you. Uh, ever since we fought that dragon, There's you've been, a ladder over been there. a little weird. Ladder? Yeah, yeah, ladder. <sighs> There's a ladder over there. Yeah, ladder, ladder, ladder. No, but seriously, ever since... Look, a ladder. Oh, what? What? Where? Enemies approaching. Oh. Come here, you vile fiend. Oh, goddamn, super chicken. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, get back. This. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Die. Oh, damn, I'm going rat. Get out of here. Die. Get. Come on, get. They're waiting yeah. to fire. Yeah, yeah. get him. Get him, Pond. Yeah, get back. Yeah. yeah, nice. Give me that bump. All right, man, let's go to the inn. You feeling all right? Don't worry, I'll be right behind you, master. Come on, let's go. Yes, master. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel Random Drop and this week I have to talk about probably one of my favorite games ever made. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, before we get started I just wanted to say if you enjoy our content and want to stay up to date with our videos, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Thanks. So, on to the video. So Dragon's Dogma. I played the original game back in 2012. I played the very shitty original release 20 frames a second PS3 version and back then I didn't finish the game but I played quite a bit of it as I didn't have money and I rented it and I rented it for like two weeks I think but as I was playing through it I kind of saw what they were going for and understood like hey there's something here and the combat completely sold me but I was so lost in the world at the time and how anything worked and I probably got halfway through the game or so then years later uh, I, I skipped the Dark Arisen re-release, but I came back with the PC version as I was really excited because, man, that frame rate was really bad in the original. Thank God we have this PC version now. And with Dark Arisen, they updated the game in so many ways and then added Bitter Black Isle, which is an incredible super dungeon that that game had and is sorely missed in its sequel, sadly. But hopefully we'll get something like that in the future. But Dragon's Dogma 1 is this like hidden gem and, and it was like this game that's like as people were loving Assassin's Creed, Skyrim, all these other games that were just so... Back then, they were good, but they were just like a thousand things on the map. This game was like just more about the adventure and the pawns and, and you learning the routes of the world and a world that was dangerous. Shit came out at night and fucking killed you. You bumped into a dragon at low level, it was an impossible fight. If you didn't have enough gear in the original game and you didn't hit a certain damage threshold, you would barely do any or no damage to enemies that were way past your depth and it was a brutal world i wouldn't say the game was hard right it wasn't necessarily hard as you figured it out you could blow shit up in that game but the difficult thing about it was it was a knowledge check knowing how the game worked and where to go and how to plan your routes and and what spells to bring and what enemies were weak to what and where this quest was it was just like this very different experience so itsuno came back with dragon's dogma 2 to finish what he started and create that like dnd like campaign if you've never been here before this is how i do my reviews i list the positives the negatives then i list my final thoughts at the very end of the video so let's get into the review of dragon's dogma 2. the biggest selling point to dragon's dogma 2 and what will probably actually filter a lot of people out is the sense of adventure of this game this game doesn't treat you like an idiot it gives you the tools you need to have an adventure throughout the game. It's not a game where they give you a quest and then they just point it on the map and you could fast travel there immediately. It's Suno's des design decision to, hey, what if we just made traveling fun and engaging rather than this like thing where as soon as you get to a spot once, you never want to like re-travel the path. I, I recently played Seven Rebirth where I was kind of just like filling out the map because it gave me power, but I wasn't really enjoying it. It was like brain dead content. It was a thing where I would like put on a podcast or a video and barely pay attention to what I was playing and just like, oh, I finished all that. Great. Now I can continue with the thing I like, which is the main story. And that, that game, I have a lot of mixed feelings about, but it, that's a like another video beside, but that's not that game's fault. That's how modern open world games have been designed. It's just a bunch of points on the map 
and quests just pointing you where to go and you're just fast traveling zipping back and forth and that was added back in the day oh it's a time saver oh it's like it's like a quality of life change because people didn't want to retread but no one ever had the thought like well what if retreading was fun what if the world was engaging enough to where when you're going down the path you don't know what you're gonna find the path is similar but you know this path and then suddenly there's a griffin attacking your ox cart leading to this incredible battle where you have to run away you're out of hp you, you're out of items you need to get the fuck out of there because saves are made unreliably on purpose because you could be sent at back multiple hours it is friction added to the game not necessarily making it harder but adding friction uh, this is a recent discussion in the final fantasy 14 community where there's just too many quality of life changes and Yoshi P is even saying like hey what if we just like start adding friction back to the game and not necessarily making it mechanically harder but adding things that like m give you a, a more fulfilling experience and that is just Dragon's Dogma 2's whole thing it is just a very well designed game that is there to have an adventure and not hold your hand. This game makes you use your brain in a lot of ways. And again, to re-explain it, and the, the main things is that it's limited fast travel. And at night, the world is more dangerous. You could barely see it in front of you and you will fight tougher enemies. Eventually you'll get higher enough level and enough spells that it's that's not an issue. Getting around is the issue because you can't see shit and you're probably gonna like run off a mountain or something. But there are some bonuses to walking around at night. It's easier to see the golden seeker coins or the, or the treasure trove beetles that help your carrying capacity because they glow at night and there's different enemies and different resources you want to get at night as well for the upgrade system. This whole package is just one big, it's like they gave you a D&D campaign and just let you play through it and you're going to miss shit. You're going to miss quests. You're going to fail quests. People are going to die, especially if you're just not looking up anything. And that's fine. It's okay if you don't 100% complete this game because that's not the point. The point is for you to go through a game and have like an experience and use your brain a bit. And that's where I'll get to into my next point is the D&D like quest design. Quests are just quests, right? They're just things people ask you to do. And there are some, the more important ones, and there's some obvious ones where they walk up and talk to you. But you have to walk up and talk to them. Sometimes even walk up in a certain area of the map that they don't ever tell you to go back to. And you'll bump into a guard that's like, hey, I need you to do this thing and so forth. Or this person wants to talk to you. But sometimes it's simple as like, oh, I heard that this person's husband is in trouble. And you go and talk to the wife and there's nothing to tell you to do this. You go and talk to the wife. And he's like, hey, he might be in trouble. I learned this rumor. And she asks you to go save him. All my friends missed that quest because they didn't bother to like just walk up and talk to the lady. And she was like, holy shit, please help, please help him. And it sends you off to fight a Doolahan at the very early of the game into this like part of the area that you haven't been to yet. It's such a cool thing to like, right? The quest itself is simple, but how you like come upon it. And it helps with like, re like second and third playthroughs, right? Because you're going to find things you probably missed. There was another quest, uh, and I don't want to spoil too much, but it's it's another quest where like you walk up to a person's office and the, their attendant's like, hey, she's not here right now. She's busy in the other room. But you remember because of a cutscene and a prior main story quest earlier that there may be a way to look into that room. And you just, I just did it. There's nothing to tell me to go do that. I just thought and used my brain and did it. And I had a prompt. And I looked into the room and I saw what happened and I got a new quest completely missable. You are never told to walk into the area ever again after you're initially there. The, the character mentions like, hey, you owe me a favor, but it's not a thing where she ch she chases you to like, hey, give me to give you a quest. You have to actively seek it out, which is so interesting. And it's not a thing on the map again. And you have to use your brain a little bit. It's not even a lot. It's just like, hey, what happened in that last scene? Oh, hey, maybe I could recreate that. And it totally worked. And it makes you feel so smart. It, it makes you not feel like a fucking idiot. How most just open world games feel, right? They're so scared of you missing things or having a bad or negative experience that everything is just so clean and flat that there are no highs and lows. And that, that's not what some people want. And I get that. But this is what Dragon's Dogma is. This is what it's been wanting to do. And those highs and lows, like I love traveling. And there are times where, yeah, like I have to go to a port of the map I've been to. And it's like, oh man, do I really want to walk that far? Okay, well, next time I'm there, I'm going to put a port crystal and make sure I have a network of crystals to teleport around faster and easier. It's like, hey, I'm really having issues with fast travel. Okay, make it your next goal to find port crystals. 
and they're around the map and some of them are very easy to get and some of them are much harder right and there's some that you can miss and so forth but they will make your game experience a lot better and i made it a goal of mine of like i'm going to find as many port crystals as i can and place them out smartly around the map to where backtracking was like never an issue in fact there's like parts of the map i like stopped seeing again because i kept teleporting too much the whole backtracking thing and being annoyed by that is something you can just fix yourself and the game gives you the tools to do that and another funny thing about the quest is that you never get a quest failed right you never turn something in or give someone the wrong answer and the, and the quest gives you a failure state it just gives you a different reward usually and sometimes <laughs> with some of them it feels like failing the quest would have been the better outcome it's it's really interesting where it's it's a more again dmd like approach where hey this is the thing i want you to do and there's just multiple ways this could be resolved sometimes two or through three ways right but sometimes you can there's one where i put someone in jail because of the thing they were doing but i wasn't completely against what they were doing but how they went about it and i and i saw them in the jail while i was doing another quest and i let them go and there's actual dialogue of like thank you they, they, they thank you for releasing them and they escape even though like they just had a conversation with you where they say they hated you i unlocked the door and let them out and they were like thank you for releasing me and they went off the, about their way i never bumped into them again but the fact that i even thought about that that a person might walk into that area and rp and be like i feel like this person needs to be let out is a really cool thing and again and games don't do that they're so static in a lot of ways and this game feels so damn lived in again another quest where there's a thing that attacks a village and because i remembered what happened earlier in the story in a cutscene, i was able to kill the thing that attacked the village most of the times it would just probably run away but because i used my brain and when i saw it was being attacked i immediately thought oh there's a thing i saw in the village earlier that might help and i immediately ran to it and used it and i killed the thing that you're probably not supposed to kill to like level 50 because it drops an in-game weapon for one of the classes and when you do it it also gives you the class and the master ability of that class and it's fully intentional there's that's the whole there's no way that that thing is there for other than that very purpose in that quest and i felt so goddamn smart using it and doing it and just like oh this game is and it's not even like mind blowing what it's doing. It's just the fact that it's doing that. Games have been able to do this for years now. And it's just so refreshing to do quests and not, again, be treated like an idiot. This game feels so alive and not yet every game has to be like this. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're definitely trying to make it like a fantasy role playing adventure, you got to look at these quests. You got to be more like Baldur's Gate, right? Where there's multiple resolutions and you can give people certain items and how they interact with people. Like that's the stuff people really love because it's awesome to talk to your friends and be like, oh, that's not how I solved that at all. I cannot wait to see how this inspires future games, right? Dragon's Dogma 1 was already doing its thing, its thing, but Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring kind of showed that, hey, people really actually like this stuff. If you just don't hold their hand and point them in a direction and let them have an adventure. So Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out reaffirmed of what its original choices were and being like, y'all see that? People love Elden Ring, people love Breath of the Wild, we're making ours. And then Itsuno made Dragon's Dogma 2 and <laughs> the systems will break and crash and just spark in spectacular ways and give you just like this adventure you will never have. And <laughs> the thing is like the adventure could probably go badly sometimes. But that's fine. That's incredible that there's even a game that can even do that because there's so many highs that you can hit on this game. And sometimes then so many lows where it's like, fuck, that griffin attacked my ox cart and I have to run so goddamn far. Okay, let's go. And 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 are you getting bombarded and attacked and drained? But it, it just, it works so well because it just, you're gonna remember that, right? And again, not every person is gonna love that type of game. But if you're, if you love dynamic events, if you're like not really, it's not about the story, but it's about the journey and adventure for you. And you just wanna play the game. You're not there to beat the game. You're there to just play it and experience something. Dragon's Dogma 2 is, is your game and you're going to probably have an incredible time with it. Uh, the next positive is uh, the combat, right? It, it's weird to say this because the, the combat is pretty much similar from the first game. It is much more refined. There are less classes, but those abilities have been spread out to multiple classes. And overall, the game feels great. It plays great. And the combat is just incredibly fun. Knocking down enemies with a two-handed sword, uh, the spell casting, and so forth. Like it, it, this is such a short point on this video, it just has to be said, right? The combat is what originally pulled me into the series, and they just 
hey, this was really good in the first game. Let's just grab that shit and move it over. And there's like little qualms I have with it, right? And user interface stuff and things like that. And maybe like some more depth I would want here and there to tinker character that was like in the original. But if, if you played Skyrim or something like that and you're just like, man, the combat's not doing it for me. I like the exploration and like finding loot and stuff like that and doing quests, but it's just like the combat feels samey to me. The variety in combat and how spectacular it is, especially with the pawn system and creating your pawn, the character creation, all that. It's it's it is some of the best. It's not perfect, but it's pretty goddamn fun and it's pretty good and it's gonna lead to just just look at clips of the game of people playing the game and just the wild shit that happens because of all the tools they give you it's just like again the the combat itself is an experience because of just how how it can just crash and burn in different ways and spark and again create these events that like you would never see in most games my next point is that money in this game matters i can't think of the last time i played an rpg and opened a chest of money and was like holy shit awesome money right that just doesn't happen most of the time when you play open world games or most rpgs there's a few of them right that like oh hey money's really awesome but they're very few and far between this game is like the economy matters some of the best gear is just purchased but they're very expensive so finding money and needing money to camp and rest it just creates this whole economy where when you're out there exploring and opening chests and loot and you just find a stack of money man it feels fucking good it feels incredible you're like, oh my god i can buy that armor piece now or, oh my god i'm not scraping by anymore and so forth the, again part of the quest design and the whole DD like experience money has incredible value and it's just one of the little points i wanted to bring up uh before i leave the positives because it's just like a thing you don't really see in most games and again it, it adds to that sense of adventure and it makes things f feel worthwhile to explore because at the end of the day you need money to continue with your adventures and money helps with fast travel if you have enough money you're generating enough money you could continuously buy fairy stones and they're pretty expensive but they're not absolutely expensive they're just very expensive compared to most items but again if fast traveling is the thing that you want to do and constantly do you can plan around it just know it's gonna take ten thousand gold every time you do it so hey plan out budget budget your money right don't buy that piece of gear because you're gonna need the fast travel back or I really want to save money let me just walk back right it, it just adds this dynamic that just is not in most games i love the economy of this game and the systems it's again this is probably one of my most favorite games ever made that does not mean that this game does not have problems not every game is perfect and i have some qualms with this game they're not huge but i do want to bring them up in my negatives i think the biggest negative in this game especially i think this is more of because i'm a DD one player because I've seen other people struggle a bit more with the game and the combat and feel like they're getting just like stun locked and whatnot and they're getting filtered out by enemies. But I've played D&D 1 before and, I, and like, I know how the game works. So for me, playing through the game, it was incredibly easy. And the first game was easy too. Once you figured it out, you could just blow monsters up in seconds. <laughs> it was ridiculous, like what you could do to those monsters. You could still that, do that here. Skull Splitter on the Thief is still fucking busted and broken the 11 second cast spells for sorcerers basically win fights for you so the base game is not very difficult there there are enemies that will gang if you're all your pawns are dead and they, the enemies just gang up on you they will fuck your shit up they will absolutely demolish you because you're fighting 10 on one or something like that and you're just getting beat down and stun locked so that's why you have party members right because you're not fighting alone but there are situations you can get into you can be on the side of a mountain and a harpy just grabs you and fucking throws your pawns off or something and that's awesome that that can happen well overall when i'm fighting like the big bosses mainly is my main complaint there's not enough like oh shit monsters that i fought in the game they were like oh man this one's really difficult it was like maybe the the lesser dragons and the worms were the most difficult thing but sometimes those would vary depending on how well my how good my pawn was or my sorcerer's pawn hey did they have meteor on oh that thing's fucking dead it just got blowed up or if i get like a good skull splitter spin in and just demolishes them it's really funny how you can just spam that move and just just chop them up but basically my main complaint is that lesser dragons and worms you pretty much fight on the same they're just like different versions with a couple different moves and the lesser dragons a bit stronger but you attack the heart right and you, you attack the thing 
there's some other ones that they teased earlier in the game like Dulahans and I don't, I don't want to spoil the other ones that's like oh man i wish there was more of you out there and also I, I i came to the fight very late level so i destroyed the monster and there's only like one of them and they do respawn so you can refight them but it's just like ah i wish there's a bit more larger monster variety and some of them being more difficult that you could chase and this leads me to my next point is that i really miss bitter black isle it was the dlc that was added to the original game that made that game a lot better because it gave you like this super dungeon that you can go through and scale through and find random loot with crazy affixes and tons of little secrets in it and big dangerous bosses to fight like you fight death and he's like hard as shit and then you have to get a bunch of gear to like get enough high level was it Dimos? i don't remember the very last boss has has you could beat him once and then when you play it again he has a second phase that's a lot harder and a, a lot more durable the bitter black eye was really incredible and it's just something that's sorely missing in this game and it, maybe they couldn't fit it and maybe there are plans for something similar in the future i really hope that suno looks at that idea um, there's also a survey out by the way if you want them to do bitter black or mirror dlc like that do that survey and tell them like hey bring back bitter black owl again give us something like that again because that's so replayable and it's so fun to do it, it, again it's some of the most fun you'll have in dragon's dogma one uh, because it just it's their second take at that content and combat and it's like a true dungeon crawling experience and yeah man it, it's just it's really fun and it's sorely missed in this game and my last real complaint and negative is new game plus just needs more when you do new game plus it is just the same game all the mobs are to the same level and i never really have that fun with that type of stuff i'm not the type of like oh i'm so broken i can just one shot everything now it's like no i, I kind of just want to like have a challenge at least still and replay everything with the gear and abilities i have now and that's sadly just not in the game I, you could you know beat the quests to get the end game to get to get to the end game again and re-experience that most of the game is you're gonna be one shining everything for quite a while, especially if you were like me, who got to the end game and maxed out all their gear and was like, all right, I guess I gotta like finish this game now. And, and I did it and it was awesome, but sadly new game plus, there's just nothing to bring me back. Thankfully, I'm playing on the PC version and I can mod it. And that's what I've done. I modded it so that things take incredibly reduced damage and do way more damage and now fights are lasting a lot longer and things are doing moves i've never seen because i killed them too fast originally so now i'm able to see like oh the chimera actually spits poison weird um he was always on the ground when i fought him because he just died so goddamn quickly uh, it's led to a really fun experience and i may do a video on it at some point but i want to play more and see how it balanced out and it's something that like i hope capcom themselves add to the game instead of my like real jank ass version they can add one and an official one to the game so that you can play new game plus and keep leveling up and Maybe the end game enemies show up at the beginning of the game now and more powered up, right? Just like in the beginning of the game, you're finding goblins. And by the end, all the goblins transform into orcs or like hobgoblins. So they're all fucking big and wearing armor. That's what I want, right? I just want that at the beginning of the game and throughout the whole game. Remove like the really easy enemies and whatnot. Or if they are there, give them more HP, make them more aggressive, make them do more damage. Because I just want to test my limits, right? <laughs> I want to play through this game and see what kind of shit I can get about. And as for my final thoughts, Dragon's Dogma 2 is what Itsuno originally wanted to create. Completely refined. There's nothing about this vision that's been compromised in any way by anyone. This is a fucking weird game. It, it is not meant for everyone and that's fine. Not every game has to be. As I think there was a quote recently, a game made for everyone is a game for no one. And that's like the mantra of this game. People are gonna play this and bounce off. And if you're not sure, I would watch streams and clips and videos and understand that this game is about experiencing some just wacky shit and like playing through that RPG and role playing through the game, right? And just having an adventure. It's not about beating it. It's not about this story that's just gonna like bring you to tears or anything like that. It's solely focused on that. You and your crew going through this world and just doing some wild shit at times. And it's been so long since the original release and it's like a 12 year wait and it's so good to have this feeling of like oh man i was right all along about this game i was right to like dragon zaga one this whole time and and it seeing it fully realized we're like fuck yeah it's not no longer like a weird game for weirdos right the dragon zaga one here's a good game for weirdos now right it's 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 a much refined version and there's a lot there's gonna be a lot of new fans to the series and i hope this inspires other open world games is like take a little bit of risk try different things try making the journey matter more let me explore and find things just let go of the hand a little bit right i i, I don't need 
that famous video I think Aaron did from Game Grumps. Like, Mega Man, Mega Man, press A to jump. Like, I just don't need that shit anymore. Some games aren't made for beginner gamers, and that's fine. Give them what they need to be given, and let them figure it out, and that is fine. Games can be designed that way, and Dragon's Dogma is the proof of that. And they were every very upfront in the marketing being like, there's gonna be consequences to what you do. There's gonna be limited fast travel. But what we're telling you is that we're gonna make it worthwhile. And they did it. They completely did it. And, and it's sort of like the last part of like the drama going around the game. Yeah, performance issues and whatnot, they suck. They will be fixed. They've already patched the game to add like the new game stuff and all that. And performance is like increased a little bit. Uh, the PS5 is now locked at 30 because variable frame rate is like really weird and just makes it feel crappy. So being locked at 30 makes much more sense. And yeah, it, it's going to take some time and it sucks that the game came out this way. Wait a while if you want to wait for some patches because they will patch it and it will get better. Um, and especially like probably by the time like the DLC comes out and whatnot and as for the microtransactions like anyone who's played DD1 knows that you don't need to buy any of that shit it's just like this weird thing Capcom has done and been doing for a long time and it, we're just it's happened so often that everyone just stopped caring but like alright fuck off Capcom like yeah put it in whatever no one's gonna buy it and yeah it, it's just like you buy five fairy stones oh you're gonna need like 20 or 30 by the time you beat this game it's not even enough to like make a dent in the experience because you can only buy that stuff once but again it's very much not needed none of it is even close to needed so that's my quick word on that dragon's dogma 2 is probably my favorite game ever made at this point it does have its issues of course i'm not like blind to it obviously but game design wise as someone who loves game design and the way different ways you can make the same game but just look at it differently and move parts around can change the experience quite drastically as someone said very recently friction is where sparks can fly this is adrian from my channel random drop and i'll see you on the next review peace